And in, in part, I mean, you, you, when you talked earlier, it was sort of like it felt very much like your Benedict Anderson's overrun, overused cliche there of the imagined community that these southern newspapers are trying to create. And you mentioned that this is about opinion making as well. And obviously, newspapers are in many ways our best source when it comes to kind of public opinion because we don't have opinion polls yet. But um, just kind of playing a little devil's advocate, how much can we trust these papers to represent Southern opinion? I mean, we have a strong unionist movement in certain parts of the South that definitely didn't buy into the secessionist argument. So um, are, we, are we looking here at, and I'm certainly have fallen in my own work on this, are we looking a little bit at elitism that this is an elite conversation that is going on or how much does it trickle down? And you may not know the answer for this to the average farmer in say the Piedmont of Georgia. Yeah, so um, for one, you know, a couple different answers to that. So yeah, absolutely not all Southerners were secessionists and I actually do use unionist newspapers to help me understand the unionist international perspective as well. So that's the source actually works both ways. Um, so far as the elitism issue goes, on some level it is the elites, because on some level it is the elites who have the power to decide they're going to create a confederacy, decide they're going to form a new government, decide they're going to equip an army and go to war against the United States of America. So I think on some level, almost by definition, when we're looking at the creation of this confederate nation, um, there is going to be some element that the elites are the ones who have the power to kind of make things happen here, which of course brings us to the classic debate about, you know, was confederate nationalism real? Did it resonate? Um, as well as, of course, the nationalism debate top down versus bottom up. And I think what I would kind of say to those debates is, again, what I'm really looking at here is the attempts to shape public opinion. Um, I'm not necessarily looking at whether or not it resonated. I'm looking at how they use these international comparisons to create the idea of Southern identity. And I found that, again, they did really across the board. And that really kind of leads me to, I guess, my final part of this answer, which is that to the extent that less elite voices do kind of enter into this conversation, they're very much echoing these same things. So we get letters to the editor, for example, from common citizens. We get toasts that are being made at various gatherings by common citizens. And in these examples, we get democratic meetings where townspeople are meeting and passing resolutions. And in all of those sources, I see the same themes that I'm seeing coming from the elites. So on the one hand, we do have the journalists, the politicians, the opinion makers trying to shape this opinion and create this Southern identity and nationalism. But we also do have evidence that the common folk, at least educated white common folk, are picking up on these ideas as well.